एवरीवन दिस इज आयुषी गुप्ता वेलकम टू द 49th एपिसोड ऑफ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट आर ऑफ कोड ब्रॉट टू यू बाय मिलियन लाइट्स मिलियन लाइट्स इज अ टीवी चैनल डेडिकेटेड टू इंप्रूविंग द स्किल्स ऑफ पीपल एंड देयर एम्प्लॉयएबिलिटी नाउ लेट मी टेल यू अ लिटिल मोर अबाउट द माइक्रोसॉफ्ट आर ऑफ कोड माइक्रोसॉफ्ट आर ऑफ कोड इज अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स कोर्सेज एंड टॉक्स बाय एक्सपर्ट्स who are going to be discussing the latest microsoft technology topics related to programming and industry forecasts that are all focused on employability these courses are basically for people pursuing computer science this content has been created by our partner microsoft and today we have christopher and john with us to help you building responsive ui with bootstrap Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, JavaScript framework for developing responsive UIs. This course will help you to develop good skills to create rich UIs for users and tips on building great-looking applications. Now let's move towards the course. Let's have a look at what we have covered so far in the previous episodes. Introduction to Bootstrap. Bootstrap components, page design, Visual Studio and ASP.NET integration, JavaScript functions, and using Bootstrap with less. In this episode, we will cover the topic Bootstrap in the real world. So let's get started. So I says to the guy with the monkey, "Oh, not even." <laughs> Hi, um, welcome back. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who have, you know, haven't been following along for uh, for the entire day, or right. maybe you're just jumping in um, for this on demand. Which, by the way, to answer probably one of the biggest questions in the chat room, um, this will be available in about three weeks from today. Today is um, August twenty seventh. Yeah. Um, I really have no idea what happened in August, but it is Wednesday, <laughs> um, August 27th of uh, 2014, um, and so it'll be available about three weeks. The exact same shortcut link that you used earlier to get to here will actually get you to the on-demand version and as that's, well. That's for the video, the code we've been publishing throughout the day. There's a few things we may exactly. update at the very end, but most of the code you've already seen, you've seen yep. today is already live. Exactly, so. exactly. And uh, by the way, in case you didn't pick it up from the uh, little sign, yeah. Right back there. There you go. That's what we're doing. Um, and uh, that's who I am, and that's who he is. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get rocking awesome. and rolling from uh, from there. Um, it's uh, you know getting late. We get punchy. Exactly. This is pretty much what we always do. So with that, we want to close off in module seven here, bootstrap in the real world, by just really kind of going back, talking about what we've talked about and trying to hopefully settle some myths and, and really kind of make the case one last time for going off and using Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's actually just bounce right on into the first big section here, um, which is Bootstrap, but not Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. I'm a SharePoint guy, Office 365 guy, and one of the things that I would say is probably the most common question that I ever get asked by developers is, or really statement, I guess, we don't want it to look like SharePoint. And my question is always the, the, the same right back to them, which is, why? You're, you're using SharePoint. SharePoint brings an awful lot to the table as far as uh, a consistent UI, as far as all of those forms that you can use. And to go back and say, well, we're going to invest all of this money and all of this time and all of this energy and all of this money, to repeat it, why would you then say, all right, we want to rip all of this out and we want to start all over again? And the same sort of applies with Bootstrap. That granted, yes, you're not investing necessarily money in it, but there's certainly going to be some time and some work that's already done for you. So before you sit down and say, all right, well, we want to go in and we want to make this not look like Bootstrap, I'm going to ask you that first big question mm -hmm. of why. Because 
really take advantage of what's already built. One of the consistent themes throughout all of this has been there's a great community around Bootstrap. There's already been a lot of work done around Bootstrap. Take advantage of what's there. That really every project that I've ever worked on, save for one, the most important goal was time to market. And something tells me, John, that's probably the same for, for, for you. Absolutely. It's all about time to market. Yeah, time to market. And you know, the, the second thing, and, and I think this fits in really well with that, is maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it, it's so much code, you know, whatever percentage it is, I don't know <laughs> the exact number, but you write code, everyone gets it to work, you deploy it, that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. That is, you just cross the starting line. And now that code needs to live and be maintained and updated. And so this is, in, in my software career, this is one of the biggest problems I've seen is people want to customize everything. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I could write that, I could do that. Sure, and now you broke it, you, you bought it, you know? Yeah. And, and now you're stuck with maintaining and fixing and all that. And a lot of the time, it's easy to look at code and say, I know how to do that. And you, yep. you haven't thought about all the bugs that were solved and all the problems and all that. This is a long rant for me. You better cut me off now. But <laughs> well, this, this is, I'm just with you on this. It's like, do you really need to customize everything? And, and I'm <laughs> going to back you up on that um, because I'll, I'll, I'll admit, especially earlier on in, in my career, um, that I, I, I would look at something and I would go, well, I, I, I can just build that. So I'm just going to go in and build it instead. And I will confess mm -hmm. that very early on in my career, it, it did turn into a nice little learning experience. So I did get to go in and, and kind of learn a few things and tweak a few things. But, but you know, all that I really did in the long run was spend a lot more time building something that I didn't necessarily need to spend that much time on. You don't need to go off and build it on your own. Take advantage of what's already there. Now, the next big complaint that I hear is, well, if I use Bootstrap, it's going to look like every other site out there. Now, look, there's really only one type of person that's going to notice that. Us. Probably us, yeah. Exactly. Web, Web developers. The, there's a, uh, a great little picture, um, and there's a handful of people that have probably seen it, that says, while us web developers argue about HTML5 versus Flask versus Silverlight, the rest of the world has this, and it shows a, a browser with, you know, 15 different toolbars that yeah. have all been added in. And, you know, it's, it's an over-exaggeration, and it's certainly something to laugh at, but, but it is very true that... You know, we care about those things. Mm -hmm. If you go up and you talk to your typical non-web developer, it, they may have noticed that there's some level of consistency, but for the most part, they probably haven't even picked up on it. And really, is it bad? So that there's some level of consistency? Because if this and this and this all behave the same way, you know what, I've learned one, and now I can apply those skills in other places. Mm -hmm. I, it's, People listening to us, and I hope some of the people on this are listening to us. <laughs> Hopefully um, people are still listening. <laughs> but, but people may think, you know, we're, we're launching into this thing to say, you can't customize Bootstrap. Right, and, deal and with we're it. not. Absolutely not. You can customize everything. You can make it look, and we'll show you how to do that. Right. But, but we want to start with just think about it. Don't customize it just because. Exactly. You know? Just because you can. That yeah. um, for, for those of us who, who remember the, the, the good old days of, of, of MySpace, um, which was, you know, bastion of, of awful HTML, um, the, the reason that it was awful HTML is because people would go off and they would learn how to do something and they would do it just for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. Don't do that with your application. Don't do something just for the sake of doing it. Everything has a time and a place. And just to kind of close all of this off, and this is again something that we've highlighted, take a look at third parties. Mm -hmm. You know, see what other people have done. Um, you know, go to Booth Swatch, go um, take a look at, at all the different themes that are available. Yeah. And you know what? There's a good chance that they will get you 90%, 95% of, of, yep. of the way to where you want to be. And then you can just go in and start tweaking it. Now, Can, you know, yeah. actually, while we're at that, I had brought a few of these up. And do you mind if I, oh, real quick? Please. So, first of all, I'd like to show if you go onto the boots, bootstrap, getbootstrap.com. Didn't you just close the browser and had no tabs like at break? <laughs> they multiply. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, here is this bootstrap expo. So expo.bootstrap.com. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it seems to be I'm freaking out on my computer. 
Um, so I'm going to try one more time, but yeah, it freaks out. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to bring it up, but there's there are a lot of great um, sites there that that are uh, that you know show you how your site can look. If you go to Bootswatch, uh, first of all, you know here's here's some sample ones, and there's this built with Bootstrap. So if I click on built with Bootstrap, here's examples of a bunch of other things that are built with Bootstrap, uh, surprisingly enough. And you'll <laughs> see th the thing that these have in common is generally that they look good. Um, they're, you know, uh, they, they are relatively different. Um, uh-huh. And so they're very different. The point being this site here does not look like that site. So don't, don't be freaked out. Right. You know, you definitely can change things a bit. And there's a lot of good inspiration you can pick up from there. Yep. One other thing is, like you were saying, Spend twenty bucks. You know, the, the best the best uh, bootstrap sites, and the, you know that I've seen when people are building something. I bought this theme, and it cost me fifteen dollars. And the, yeah. there's quite a bit in here. Fifteen whole dollars. Like yeah. you know, when you go in and you take a look at that, I, I want you to weigh that amount against whatever your hourly wage or rate happens to be. Yeah. Um, something tells me that's going to be a little cheaper than what you're charging somebody else for your services. Yep. And in general, the free Bootstrap themes are going to be good for your you know, lists and very simple kind of reading yeah. things. If you're building a dashboard or something complex, if we can go back to my screen here, these things take some time. Yeah. And so these, those are, you'll see a good amount of these kind of, uh, of nice looking dashboards. And those are definitely worth spending. Look at this, $4. Come on now, yeah. four <laughs> bucks. So, I mean, these, these really are um, uh, impressive. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yep. Okay, back to yep. you. Okay, so let's um, uh, bring it back to my slide here. And I want to mention that when it comes to modifying Bootstrap, uh, and this has again been one of the big themes of the day, it's just CSS. Mm -hmm. That it has been all about just add in classes and away you go. So if you want to modify it, well, you can really actually do two things. Number one, you can add more classes. So create the class that you want, change it to what you want it to be, add it to wherever you want it to be, and away you go. Or B, just go in and take a look at the classes that are already there and tweak those. Mm -hmm. Why tweak the classes that are already provided? Well, number one, it's going to give you that consistency. But number two, it's, it's going to be easier to train your developers up that they just keep using the classes that they've always used. But last but not least is if you decide later on that you want to go in and modify the, uh, the theme, if you've been keeping with those consistent pages mm -hmm. or consistent classes, that, that theme is going to work. And if you decide, hey, you know what, this really is going to take us a little while, let's just go spend 50 bucks or, or 100 bucks or whatever it is on a custom theme and you want to just slap that in, you're going to know right out of the box it's going to work. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I would also suggest, and then I'm going to get in and do a demo here momentarily, is consider the possibility of just grabbing a third party and then just making little tweaks to that for your own purposes. So consider doing that instead. Mm -hmm. So if I open up Visual Studio here, I have a very basic little um, uh, block here, and this is just going to be uh, the little thing that I'm going to use for, uh, for my demo here for customization. And I'm just going to real quick um, div um, class equals uh, container. And uh, let me just go in and uh, kx uh, bootstrap. And I'm going to go grab, uh, sorry, John, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go grab a Jumbotron. Jumbo. <laughs> Boom. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. And um, I, the, the rest of the text I'm just going to leave because I, I really just don't care. And uh, let me go ahead and fire up my page. Chugga, chugga, chugga. And sure enough, there is my cool little Jumbotron heading. Woohoo! Now, that's, of course, again, what we get out of the box. Let's say I want to go in and I just want to start tweaking it. Mm -hmm. Well, now, granted, should you go in and just create your own CSS class? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to do it in line right here just to make my demo a little bit simpler here. So I'm just simply going to say style. And now, whoa, I'm just going to throw my mouse over there. <laughs> um, you're going to notice that if I hit dot, which of course is for class, that Visual Studio is automatically going to, as part of IntelliSense, show me all the classes that it sees in that file. Mm -hmm. So it sees container and it sees Jumbotron. So I want to go in and I want to modify my Jumbotron there. And instead of that gray background, maybe I want a light blue. So I just simply say background, background, color, blue. Cool. So now I come back over here. I hit refresh. Oh, 
refresh. There we go. And now it's nice. blue. Yeah, yeah, much better, Just, much better. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go in and maybe make it light blue, which is really what I meant to do. Um, there we go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, so okay. now it's 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 light blue. And you might decide, you know what? Gosh, there's there's too much space that's being taken up on on the top and the bottom. I don't disagree with you. Not a problem. Let's just go in and get rid of that. So let's just say padding, colon, and let's maybe say uh, four pixels, um, like that. And I really should probably use um, uh, REM instead, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, and now you're gonna notice that it's, it's shrunk down to only taking up that much space. That one of the biggest complaints I have about the Jumbotron is the amount of space that it yes. takes up. Yeah. Now I've it shrunk that really down. Jumbo. It is really, it's a jumbo a jumbotron. Slightly more petite jumbotron. Exactly. So now I've gone in and, and I've modified that for, for my own evil purposes. And so <laughs> you're going to notice that I didn't do anything fancy. That really this is sort of CSS 101. That I took a class and I modified it and we use the, the inheritance. And of course, if I did want, let me just go in and create um, my, uh, my CSS here. Uh, right click add and um, style sheet. And let's go in and just simply call this um, site, whatever, doesn't really matter. And let me go in and just paste that into there. There we go. And let me do a save and let me get rid of that style right there. And then let me just drag and drop that out to simply make sure that my site is at the very end there. Let's go in and hit refresh. And you're gonna notice that it's still applying all my settings. Mm -hmm. Because remember that CSS works in a last write. So if you wanna modify any of the classes that are built in, all that you had to do, all that you have to do is make sure that those are applied last. So when I went in with my custom CSS, I created it, you're gonna notice that I listed that after my bootstrap. Mm -hmm. So that way I could modify everything without modifying that bootstrap CSS file. And if I later decided, you know what, I really don't want that anymore, all I have to do is just go in, get rid of it, come back over here, hit refresh, and now I'm back to the way that bootstrap started. Now, if we're gonna take this to the next logical step, should you really consider going in and using less? Absolutely, and I think John made a fantastic case for that mm -hmm. in the last module. But the big point that I wanted to drive across here are actually the big couple of points. Number one, be careful before you go off and start reinventing the wheel. The wheel's already done. Mm -hmm. Go with it. Number two is, this isn't scary. At the end of the day, it's just simply CSS, and so you can go in and start modifying things with CSS. And number three is that you can start simple. Can you jump off uh, um, and, and start doing less files? Absolutely, but if all you wanna do is just little tweaks, then just go in and make little tweaks. Keep the simple things simple. Yep. You know, so I, I just wanted to, you know, bounce off a few of those things that you pointed out there. Yeah. If, if we can go to my screen here, there's, there's you've got your choices here um, when you look at this. So here's my content. I've got Bootstrap, I've got Bootstrap Min, and I've got Site CSS. So if you want to, you know, a lot of people might be tempted to jump in and start messing with these, you know, and start <laughs> editing those. And that's where you go if you want to create your own theme. Right. If you really, and, and so I prefer to work in site.css for my site specific stuff. Yep. And the idea should be if I want to apply a new theme to my site, if I've messed with these, if I put everything in there, I can't just reskin my site. Right, exactly. So maybe I, I say, you know what, no matter what I use, I want my jumbotrons to be a little smaller and this kind of, I want to apply this stuff afterwards, as you said, last right. Mm -hmm. So first bootstrap CSS is going to be applied and then your CSS is going to be applied right. on top. And so that's, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's great to be able to do that. One other reason for that, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second, but if you go in and put all your stuff in, in here, we can no, no longer take advantage of CDNs, Content Delivery Network, right. because you are the only source in the world of that bootstrap.css. Exactly, and if you're not familiar with the CDN, we're gonna talk about that. That's in, coming up uh, real in, soon. In, in just a couple of minutes. Um, yeah. Josh in the chat window said, it's time for a Microtron class uh, <laughs> instead. <laughs> all right, um, let's um, take it back. 
And let's now talk about kind of taking some of the different uh, tricks that we've learned mm -hmm. and actually applying that into our uh, into our environment. So, yep. John, you mentioned at the intro that yeah. your blog uses CSS. Yes. Or I should say, well, it uses CSS. <laughs> it, it does it use uses, a little bit of CSS. Use, <laughs> so, so this it uses Bootstrap. It does. So, uh, this is something I'm I'm. Uh, they did. They did this really cool thing recently. Hey, we, hey! Those those couple of guys. Uh, look, there we uh, are. Familiar. This yeah. is actually from our previous uh, MVA. Um, this is a link to it here. This is our introduction. Um, a couple people actually asked about that earlier. Here, by the way, I want to just show this off as an example, and I, I hadn't meant to show this, but I'm going to. So here, I wanted to have this image in here, but I, this image doesn't work well when you shrink the, the screen down. So what do you do? Well, I just want to hide that image, right? And in the past, I would have gone in and hacked around with some CSS. Well, since we're using Bootstrap, this was a perfect time to go in, and I could just use that class on there. So I actually did uh, this on this image, somewhere in here, hidden XS, right? So there I said, on extra small page width, just hide that. So th that is one really cool example of, of that. <laughs> um, so I also did want to show, uh, we recently updated the, the entire weblogs.asp.net to run on Orchard, and uh, it's also running on Azure websites. So this is, uh, some people were asking about, you know, example sites and, and blogs and things that they could use. Um, and Orchard, I've been incredibly happy with it. It's incredibly fast. We're hosting 750 web blogs, including Scott Guthrie's. You know, so like <laughs> slightly He's got a popular bug. <laughs> yeah, like a popular blog. Yeah, and so uh, last I had heard, I think they're paying... 540 bucks a month or something, because Azure websites are just awesome. Uh, so here is Scott Guthrie's, right? So his does, you know, his looks relatively different from mine, um, but this is all bootstrap as well, right? So all these, every time he posts every 10 minutes about a new release to uh, Azure, um, this is where that happens, and this is all going out through um, Orchard and Bootstrap. So here's mine, uh, slightly different. So I went in and I, um, this is all using Bootstrap for themes. And so for instance, when I go in and change my Bootstrap theme, I can go in here. So let's say I want to, instead of using uh, Bootstrap, or I'm using United and then I've got a different um, thing on there. So let's mm -hmm. go into Bootswatch and let's pick a new theme for my blog. Uh, and so let's say instead we want to go Cyborg just to you know, kind of make it obvious. Um, so this is, you know, if we go in here, this is, I believe, just Cyborg. Right? That's Cyborg. Cyborg. So now let's go, instead of United, I'm going to change this to Cyborg. So all that you're doing is just updating the CDN that you're pulling it down from. Exactly. I'm going in here on, uh, in the admin interface, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, yep, there we go. I would like Cyborg. Now, I do have a few color overrides, um, uh, but in general, this should look incredibly hideous. Uh, so now, and I think if I do Control F5, now I've got a weird mix of everything because I've got some cyborg and I've got some of my own uh, custom stuff. Custom. Yeah. So here, in 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 the interest of just taking this to 11, here let's go. We'll call this style foo. <laughs> well, why don't you just make 10 louder? <laughs> but, well played. But, but, but this is 11. Yes, okay. <laughs> so there I've changed that style tag to a style foo tag, which is not supported in all browsers, unfortunately. <laughs> so there, there we go. go. Perfect. So we've just re re Okay, that's hideous. Well done. Yes, it is. Um, and I've also, that's nice because style foo is apparently rendered. So the point is, this is all bootstrap, and that's great, and this allows, mm -hmm. you know, um, that is, that is a, a really nice example, and this is a site that's uh, supporting 750 blogs, all with very different look and feel, and uh, performs pretty well. We also wanted to you know, talk about you know, some of the different options um, for things that you can do, and I just want to point you back. That's an example of a blog. Um, and if we look at something like Built with Bootstrap, you can find all, there's a lot of e-commerce you'll find on here. Right. And so definitely e-commerce is, is a big application. And then also things just like dashboards. Um, uh, definitely, you know, pretty popular. And, and um, 
so yeah, those are that's kind of you know some real world examples, places to look. Absolutely. Okay. Are where are we up to now? Um, we're actually up to my demo, um, but I just sort of realized, and it actually works out okay because people can watch me create it. Uh, <laughs> is I, I just sort of realized. Oh, wait a minute! I wanted to do one last uh, little thing here. Um, I want to do, 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 do a class, and I'm going to call this uh, album. Okay. So what I did here is I real quickly went in and just created my um, uh, little MVC application, and uh, there's my little album, and we'll just say prop and tab tab, um, and we'll say album. Um, ID, and then prop, tab, tab, and uh, string, and um, title, and prop, tab, tab, and string, and artist. Okay, just like that. So this is sort of what uh, John had done uh, previously, and then right click controllers and add, and let it go in and do everything for me. And my model class, oh, you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna build real quick here. Before I go anywhere, build, there we go. Um, add controller. Okay, now, while I'm doing this in the background, let me just mention the fact that this exact demo, though it did go sideways on me uh, when I did it live, I uh, <laughs> distinctly remember that, um, in our um, MVA session on MVC. Uh, if you're really curious about um, MVC and how to get started, um, and you know, I might be a little bit biased, but I, I think that's a great place to get started, that you will mm -hmm. see kind of from the very basics, hey, this is how you get rocking and rolling. Okay. So, let me let it generate everything for me. So um, scaffolding, scaffolding, scaffolding. Uh, and I could, I suppose, have gone in and customized all the scaffolding. Um, but here's what I want to do is let me come into my little spot right over here. And let's say, for example, on, uh, on details. And what you're going to notice on details is that this is going to set up a very basic little display for the details of, of our item. And let's say I wanted to go in and, and, and modify this. I wanted to um, tweak all of this on, uh, on our details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sneak right inside of here, and I'm going to say um, div, um, and I'm going to say class equals uh, container. There we go. And let's go in and say div uh, class equals row. Actually, I could have done without the container because it's automatically going to be in a container. Um, there we go. Uh, so let's go in and do that. And then I'm going to say div, and I'm going to say class equals um, call um, and uh, my um, span or SM and uh, one. Okay, whatever. Whatever it is that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Now let's say that what I wanted to do is I wanted to get the display name to display inside of there. Or I want to customize the eventual HTML that's going to be output by our HTML helpers. And you'll notice that on a lot of the different helpers here, and I of course went to the one that doesn't have it, but on a lot of the different uh, helpers here, it will give you the opportunity to add in a call and yep. um, for a link. Uh, let's grab the action link one. Um, it will give you the opportunity to add in a call for attributes. So yep. let's say that I need to add an attribute into here, which, as we've already seen, is quite common, and I need class. So at the very end here, it's going to say, all right, well, I want HTML attributes as an anonymous object. So exactly what we're seeing over here on the left side. Yep. So. I'm going to create an anonymous object, new. Now, I want to identify a class here. So I'm going to say class equals, and let's go in and say um, call, ah, um, there we go. I'm going to say call md10, uh, just like that, and close my curly. OK, now and there's one other thing to worry about. I've got a little bit of yeah. a problem. And here. that was maybe on purpose, but I'll be the fall guy here. Go ahead. Class is a reserved word. That's the exact point that I was looking to yep. make. Yep. <laughs> class is a reserved word. Now, mm. can you do that? No. Well, no. technically, yes. <laughs> is that good form? No. No. So, fortunately, in MVC, 
If you need to add in a class for whatever reason to an attribute, it's simply the at sign. Mm -hmm. And then away you go from there. Okay, there we go. Now, the next little item uh, that I wanna highlight is, uh, is this. Um, up here on, uh, on my index, you'll notice that we've got uh, create new and we've got all this jazz. And let me go in and fire this up. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Waiting, waiting, waiting. If I get a migration error, um, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. So let me go in, um, create new, um, and um, there we go. Um, and let's just go in and, and hit create. So there's my little artist. But I've got a little bit of a problem here. I just created that, but there's nothing on the screen here that says, hey, by the way, we just created this brand new record. So typically the way that we would go in and do that is by passing in a little bit of temp data back into our index. And the thing about temp data is that temp data will survive this redirect that we're gonna do. So let's go in and let's say temp data and let's say message and let's say equals and we'll say created and then my album and my title. And, and should we talk more about what the difference? There's temp data, there's view data, there's view bag and we all We could get into that. Um, you know what, let's just do what we always done. Look at Rachel Appel's blog. Mm, that's a good one. Um, that if you just simply uh, fire up Bing and do a search for Rachel Appel, A-P-P-E-L, uh, and temp data, she actually did a great job of writing all of that up. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it with temp data. The biggest thing is temp data survives the redirect, yeah. and it's a simple way for me to pass a message, mm -hmm. um, which is exactly what I wanna if you, do. If you put in view data, it's only available as the view's rendered and it goes away. Temp data, as you said, survives that redirect. Exactly, that's yep. exactly it. So now, if I kick back over here to my uh, little um, uh, little index, what I'm gonna do up at the, uh, the very top here is I'm just gonna fire in an if statement, and I'm gonna say if not string is null, actually I'm gonna do it this way, if not, um, or if temp, I'm sort of just changing my mind here as I go, uh, message if that um, doesn't equal Null, so that tells me that there's now something inside of temp data. What I want to do, Control K, Control X, I want to get mm, okay, and you're in CSHTML. No? Cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, you know why? Because you are inside of oh. Razor code, so there you go. Um, KX. There we go. All right, and let's just, pay, yeah, we'll just cut, cut and paste it. So bootstrap, and then I want uh, an alert. Boom. So we'll just go in, grab my little alert. Let's go ahead and cut and paste. There we go, that looks better. And so this is gonna be alert um, success. Let's go in and get rid of that. Let's go in and get rid of the little button. And let's go in and just update this really quick here to say um, created album um, and you successfully um, created and we'll say temp data and um, message dot to string. And by the way, don't put the semicolon to the end there. Actually, <laughs> somebody just tweeted me the other day saying they just can't get out of that. I habit. know, it's, it is tricky. And, and, and it is. Okay, so. Let me go in, do re -quick, uh, real quick uh, rebuild there, and refresh, chugga, chugga, chugga. Wait, they need wait, to make wait. that refresh button just a little bit bigger for you. know, it. yeah, just no kidding. Just a small bit. Okay, and uh, let's go in. Um, uh, John um, sings uh, Sinatra, mm, and sure uh, John uh, Galloway. I think you've got the perfect voice for it. Um, <laughs> hit create, and now you're gonna notice, <laughs> and now you're gonna notice right there up at the very top is that alert. And, uh. and the main takeaway that I want you to get out of all of this, and stop me if you've heard it before, HTML, 
CSS. And so that's really all that I did here to make that little bit happen. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and you know, so I think that's the real key is is you're showing uh, if you can just show that code. This is your standard, all your standard skills that you know in yes in whatever web dev environment you're used to. So if it's MVC, if it's uh, web forms, if it's PHP, if it's classic ASP, if it's Cold Fusion, we don't care. Exactly. This is HTML. So, and yep. and honestly, uh, this also applies just fine if you are doing you know web API or Node.js mm -hmm. or whatever on the back end and single page app on the front end. Absolutely. This is, this is a, a separate level. This is the presentation. This is it. Yep. yep. Perfect. All right. I'm going to get back to my little slides here. And let's talk a little bit about kind of bringing it all together. So we've seen the Visual Studio mm -hmm. integration there. Um, you've got deployment. Uh, we've got our last compilation. Do you want to pick up on the CDNs there? I sure do. And yeah. Yep. OK, so the, the thing you'll find here, and actually, it's worth me, it's worth me bringing this one back, bringing up the code here if I don't have it open. Uh, if I open up something like this, one of these semantic bootstrap ones, by the time, with all these mix-ins and stuff, mm -hmm. by the time I compile everything, um, it's, it's a good amount of code here. So I'm going to close that out, and I will bring this over and save it. So here, this if we look on the left here, eh, it doesn't look too bad, right? And then I go ahead and save that. And then if I look at the CSS that's generated, that's a good amount, okay? So you do need to be uh, you you do need to be cognizant of how much CSS you're pushing out to the browser. Mm -hmm. And I I could even you know if I um so I'll I'll start run this and see if it's ready by the time I'm done talking. But if I go in here and I look at the site responsiveness stuff in the web web dev tools, you'll see that you know it is spending some time pushing that out and also processing all those. And so, uh, you know, just something to be aware of as far as, you know, UI responsiveness, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, if I go in here and start doing things, and what exactly is taking that time? So um, let me see. I could do that. Analyzing collected data. Actually, I, I was, you know, this is, this is interesting, but the, the more interesting one I think here is this network. If I go on here and we look at this, we'll see it's pushing a good amount. Yep. So... A good approach here is to instead uh, use a CDN. A CDN is a content delivery network. And it's good for a few reasons. And one is that um, it's going to, browsers do well at pulling content from more than one server at a time. Yep. And so, uh, so here we can see, you know, we, we're pulling down things now. Here's all my CSS. Um, so it did, it did pull that down. Here's my bootstrap bundle. So that was 30 KB, which is actually not too too bad, but um, there, there's you know a good amount of stuff going on, right? And so uh, so a CDN is a content delivery network, and the idea here is someone else is hosting your uh, CSS for you, yep. or, and and so uh, some some that you know are recommended. Uh, let me see if I go to uh, Bootstrap, get Bootstrap. Uh, one that you'll find is if you go into here, uh, I believe it's Get Started, and then it'll show you. Um, they recommend Bootstrap CDN. That is kind of the official hosted Bootstrap CDN. Um, and so they have links in here for how you can serve it. As you noticed, um, that was, or you may have noticed, that's um, the CSS that I was serving was from Bootstrap C CDN. Um, so you'll see that there. Um, You'll also, um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, that's Bootswatch. The, that's where they'll point you at as well. Mm -hmm. um, Microsoft also has a great content delivery network. So this is ASP.NET slash AJAX slash CDN, or if you just search for Microsoft CDN, this is what you'll find. So there's a lot of documentation in here about, you know, how to use it and how, using it with script managers and, and web forums and using using the direct scripts. And so we host Bootstrap. So here's Bootstrap. This has links to all the Bootstrap versions. The um, ASP.NET team's actually <laughs> really on the ball as far as getting this stuff out most of the time. And they're hosting, of course, not just the CSS, but also those fonts, um, JavaScript, you know. 
everything else nice. you might possibly want exactly. that we're afraid to ask about. Okay, so that is not super hard, and there's instructions in here about you know how to, how to get those links and how to just drop those in. The problem is, as Scott Hanselman said on his blog, CDNs fail. Sometimes CDNs are offline, or for whatever reason, your client can't reach them or something like that, mm -hmm. right? And so then you run into a, what do you do? I want the best of both. I want everything. So I actually wrote a blog post about this a long time ago about jQuery, and the same, same uh, thing still applies, where basically you can say, um, you know, here's how I can request for, uh, you know, here's, first I'll include a reference for jQuery. So uh, you're going to ping the CDN first. Well, I'll actually just load it in. Okay, right. Load it in. Well, and, and sorry, that's what I meant by ping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Load it in first from the CDN. And then I'll say, if, if it's undefined, if it doesn't exist, then I, I do this document write to, lo to write out that script reference. Right, okay. okay. Now that, that works, but it's slightly hacky. There's a better solution here, which is this using uh, in bundling. Mm -hmm. So built into Visual Studio, or built into ASP.NET's bundling system. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look over here. We'll go into my bundling system. I'll look at my bundle config. Okay. So in here we're going to see uh, there's Bootstrap. So right in here we've got these bundling references. And I can directly inside of that, I could also put in this uh, CDN fallback. Right, so uh, so Scott's got some information on how to do that in here. Um, so I'm just going to scroll way on down to the 9,000 comments. It's actually, <laughs> it's right. Scott Hines, after all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here in this, when you say new script bundle, and you can actually just set the um, you can set that CDN fallback, and so you can just point it at wherever you're going to do. So, so, you know, that's kind of the um, information on how you do that. So what's nice with that is your mm -hmm. bundle will say, it will automatically write that kind of stuff out for you. So it'll say, here's my script reference, and if it's not reachable, then grab it from my local server. Perfect. And, and I just want to, you know, r remind of something that we said earlier, too, is you can only take advantage of CDNs if you don't, if you don't modify this. Right, you, and you, somebody you, asked that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're, you know, obviously, if you're pulling from a content delivery network, you'll mm -hmm. need your Bootstrap theme to be hosted on a content delivery network, mm -hmm. and then you overwrite that. So you'll say, "Go ahead and grab this Bootstrap yep. theme." And then I'm going to make these tweaks after the fact. Right, and that's where you put in your own less or CSS file, and just make sure that that's referenced afterwards. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So, okay. Yeah, that's that's really it. So I want to um, do. Um, uh, I think what's going to wind up being last demo. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, and that's going to be about the alerts. So coming back over here to uh, to my screen, um, a couple of people asked in the chat window of my solution down here at the very bottom, where I used a little bit of JavaScript to generate the alert dynamically. And you know, couldn't you have just simply hidden it and shown it and done things like that? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. I, I could have done it that way. Um, and I'm just I, I'm not a big fan of that for a couple of different reasons. Partly a um, just because I don't like to have HTML baked in that I know is only going to appear in rare situations. That if it's just simply something on screen size where it's going to show high, then yeah, absolutely. But if I know that it's only if a user has gone through this, this, and this that that's now going to show up, I generally speaking just don't like it to take up the space. Mm -hmm. In addition, I wanted to make this next demo easier. <laughs> so let's go in and create a little bit of a function here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, right down here, <clears throat> and yes, 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 I should probably put this into a namespace. I'm not going to. Um, function. I am, however, I think going to cough. Nope. Um, all right. So let me go in, and I'm going to say function, and I'm going to say display alert. And I'm going to um, ask you for the type. I'm going to ask you for the title, and I'm going to ask you for the message. Cool. Now, boom, 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 perfect, paste, and now let's go in and plus the, there we go, plus the uh, type, 
that you've given me. There we go. And right here, let's go in, plus the title that you've given me. There we go. And then plus, and then the message that you've given me. Message. So, um, in one, two, three, four, five lines of uh, JavaScript code, I've now created a little function that will put the alert in for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not going to say that this was done on purpose, um, but you know, one of the things that I will remember from a very long time ago is about the with keyword in C sharp. And the fact the with keyboard keyword isn't there, which yeah. that could start a, a, a debate <laughs> till the cows come home. And one of the reasons that that I was given, and I don't know that this was necessarily the most authoritative source, but one of the reasons that was given was, well, look, you know, you could just simply declare a variable, call it X. There we go with single name variables. Jeremy Foster, you're in the other room. Single name var single letter variables, still bad. <laughs> in any event, um, you could go in and, and declare that, and then when you're done, just simply set that to null, then move on from there. So it was sort of a, well, we're not going to give it to you, but if you really want the functionality, you can write it on your own and get relatively close. Well, I don't have the functionality to create the alert dynamically, but it didn't take me that long to go in and just create it on my own. And so now, up at the very top here, I just simply say display alert give it the type, and this is going to be um, alert uh, success, uh, specify the, uh, the title, um, saved correctly, or whatever it is that I want to do, E, there we go. And then finally, last but not least, is you have saved your changes. Beautiful. And so now, I go back in, I launch this, I click save changes, I click commit, and there you'll notice that there's my alert back again. So, you know, do we get that out of the box? Not necessarily. Is it hard for me to just create? No, that that I that took me, you know, what, a minute and a half? Mm. Probably took a little longer because I was talking. Yeah. You know, generally speaking. A minute most, and three quarters. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know? So, <laughs> in any event. All right. So, from here, that was a fair amount of ground. Hmm. Um, hopefully what we've done today is we've helped kind of get you started and get you pointed in the right direction of Bootstrap. That honestly, the little bit of backstory about how all of this came to be is John and I did our introduction to MVC MVA. Um, and as we've already discussed, there's a lot of Bootstrap there. I shouldn't even say a lot. Bootstrap is there. Yeah. And so we got to talking and we saw a lot of questions coming through of people going, you know, we need to know more about Bootstrap. And so John and I got to talking and we said, you know, it'd be great to have an MBA on Bootstrap. Just a full day. Exactly. And, and also part of this came up because we started looking around. You know, usually when we're answering questions uh, in the chat, right. the easiest way to do that is to point you at a great link that answers your question, right? right. And, and we started looking around and we're like, you know, there's a lot of hello world Bootstrap. But right. there's not a lot of like... How do I go that next step? Exactly. You know? And so we really were just thinking that that was a good place to go. <laughs> yeah, and so, so we hope we accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But then that actually led to another conversation, which is there's really a lot that we could cover, that there's already been requests about Angular. Um, one of the things that we demoed um, in uh, our session, actually, I can't remember, did we demo Signalr? We might have, we might not have. Mm -hmm. But one of the other big questions was, hey, how about Signalr? And how about you know all of these great things that we don't have yet? Well, let's go in and start doing them. And so this was actually the first of, and you may have seen this as part of social media, the first of what we're calling Web Wednesdays, where at the very least, the last Wednesday of every month, December is going to be uh, the exception to the rule there, yeah. just because that's going to be Christmas Eve um, and you know holiday season. So chances are not going to be a whole lot of people watching. But in any event, um, what we sort of decided was, hey, let's go ahead and have it. So it's going to be the last Wednesday of every month. But I do want to stress something, is that that's not going to be the 
only Wednesday where we're going to have web con uh, content. Mm -hmm. That coming down the pipe, we've we're, we've we've got a lot of great content uh, that's currently in development. We're getting great speakers to uh, uh, to come into here. And uh, as a matter of fact, a month from now mm -hmm. is going to be the next MVA, and and you're probably the best person to introduce it here. I'm sure. I'm happy to. So uh, we're going to be doing Signal R. This is a, a this is a, f a half day, so it's a four hour. Uh, look at SignalR. It's myself and Brady Gaster. If you know SignalR, you know Brady Gaster. He's done a lot of cool yep. presentations on it. So we're going to be talking about, you know, what is SignalR? We're going to talk about SignalR on the web. Yep. And then we're also going to look at SignalR on the client. So SignalR is a great uh, real-time communication server able to call or uh, pass information to client and back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so it also works great with client uh, applications, uh, including desktop, um, server to server, uh, mobile, mobile, you know, native applications, all kind of stuff. And yep. we'll also look at scaling and performance. So really some, you know, so as you're saying, there's just, uh, there's a lot of great web information mm -hmm. out there and we want to get beyond the kind of hello world stuff and really kind of dig into some of these things answer these questions we're seeing on chat in more detail. Exactly. And if you've uh, been taking a look at the uh, the break slides, which by the way, uh, once we go off the air here in just about another couple of minutes, um, you're going to notice that on one of the break slides it does have the URL for um, uh, for the SignalR. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, unfortunately. Um, but that is going to show up on one of the break slides here um, just after we go off the air. So you can uh, you can see that URL there. Um, definitely tune in for that. Um, that's, I think, going to be uh, fantastic. Uh, there you go down at the very bottom, yep. um, AKMS uh, ASP, ASP Net dash Signal R. Um, definitely uh, check uh, check that out. Um, and I would also say, hey, you know what? If you're thinking, you know, there's definitely eight hours of content about X. By all means, mm -hmm. put it into the uh, into that chat window because you're right. There's probably uh, a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah. the next official uh, Web Wednesday is going to be the uh, the month from now with uh, with John and Brady. Yep. Um, there's I think going to be one more in between there, like another Web. Webby one, but I, I I can't remember now. There's probably. so many that are coming. <laughs> it's 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 fantastic. I'm I'm super excited. The last. Two things to mention. Um, number one, check the FAQ page. That's where you can see our slides. That's also where you can see all of our source code. We're going to be checking all of that in here momentarily, um, the last little tweaks. And there's a good chance that source code will be updated um, later on as we go in and clean things. That one of the things about doing live demos, yeah. you don't always write the neatest code. <laughs> Sometimes it's just what works right now. Um, the last thing is if you scroll down towards the very bottom, you're going to notice that uh, there's a little uh, poll, please do take that little poll. See, it's uh, right down there. You can see it oh, nice. um, on uh, on the window there. Um, but please do scroll down uh, to the very bottom, and you can see us watching us, which is yes. a little bit weird. Um, <laughs> we really, but, really do appreciate it. Yes. That, that helps. <laughs> That helps us know how well we're doing, and honestly, it helps our bosses know how well we're doing, and yes. if we should do more of these MBAs, <laughs> and so that's always very helpful for Exactly. Us. Um, so with that, I um, want to thank everybody mm -hmm. for sticking around for the entire show, for parts of the show, um, and uh, wherever it is that, uh, that you happen to be. John? Yeah, um, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. We should definitely do this again, um, maybe like in November time. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll have yeah, to. We'll, maybe something about the web. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe, like on Wednesday. <laughs> All right. Um, in the meantime, uh, a thank you to, uh, to everyone for, uh, for tuning in and enjoy your day, morning, night, evening, um, sleep, uh, exactly. whatever it is sleep that, uh, good. that comes <laughs> next. So thank uh, thanks a lot. That's all in this episode. I hope this tutorial was helpful. We will be back with some more interesting episodes on other such interesting courses. Is your mind ringing with questions, queries or doubts? Do you wish to learn more? Then visit our website www.millionlights.org and post your questions in our forums. We will be extremely happy to clear all your doubts. If you missed anything and want to rewatch it, you can download it from our website or can watch it online as well. You can also participate in our webinars, discussions with the subject experts, as well as get Microsoft certification on various courses through our website. You can also find us on Facebook by the name Million Lights, as well as on Twitter. 
For more such interesting tutorials on coding, app development and building rich UIs, keep watching Microsoft RF Code brought to you by Million Lights. Thank you.